It's been 10 years since the first human traveled faster than the speed of sound in a free fall from space. Felix Baumgartner reached the stratosphere and fell from an aircraft attached to a balloon 36 kilometers above sea level. He reached a maximum speed of 1,357 kilometers an hour during his free fall before deploying his parachute. The stratosphere is cold and temperatures drop to more than 100 degrees below zero. The air is also thinner, about a thousand times less dense than at sea level. In such conditions and without the proper gear, bodily fluids start to boil. So how was it even possible? Space diving is the act of jumping from an aircraft or spacecraft in near space and falling towards Earth. When Baumgartner jumped, the balloon that took him up was made from 161,000 square meters of polyethylene, thinner than a dry cleaner bag, and filled with 5,000 cubic meters of helium. On his journey to the edge of space, his survival depended on two crucial pieces of equipment, his pressure suit and the space capsule. His capsule was a life support system as it was pressurized to protect him from the near vacuum outside. And conditions that would literally make his blood boil. His first line of defense was his spacesuit, which he had to pressurize himself before starting his descent. The suit also included GPS units, data loggers, an accelerometer, and oxygen tanks, among other tools. While training on how to use the suit, Felix suffered from claustrophobia a fear of confined spaces that he overcame with the help of a sports psychologist. His team's biggest fear was that as he fell, he could become locked in a flat spin and lose consciousness. A flat spin would have been caused by his body becoming aerodynamically unbalanced, sending him into a spin that he might not have been able to get out of. If that occurred, he could potentially lose blood flow to his brain. Felix underwent years of training and was mentored by 82-year-old Colonel Joe Kittinger, the man who set the original record when he fell 31.3 kilometers to Earth back in 1960. Since his jump, two men have died in similar attempts, but the altitude record that Felix broke 10 years ago no longer stands. Alan Eustis has since made a free fall jump from an altitude above 41 kilometers. On his way up into the stratosphere, he rode an open gondola that contained an oxygen supply. Eustace's team designed a suit for him with the help of the company that engineered all Apollo astronaut suits used on the moon. They had never sold a suit commercially, only to the government, but they sold one to me, which I am very grateful for. And although it took him a little over two hours to get all the way up there, he completed his journey back to Earth 15 minutes after starting his fall. 